that those that have the program, you will see that um, after the opening and welcome, it's Advocate Marotta to speak on, on, on the overview for the event. There's been a slight change in the program. So after the opening, we will have uh, the SG to speak. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a big pleasure to welcome you all today to this event. My name is Hepin Gabinde. I go by the name of Advocate Gabinde. I welcome you all to this public lecture to commemorate the 1959 potato boycott uh, that happened in, in the country, wherein through the collective movement of community, through the collective movement and effort from various communities, various political organizations, particularly the ANC, uh, the communities of Mpumalanga, an economic war was staged against the apartheid government um, to stop and fight the atrocities under which black uh, farmers were, were living under. Mine is very easy today. I'm not going to talk. Mine is just to welcome and just to ensure that everything goes according to plan, according to the schedule. We are running a bit behind time, so what we are going to do, as stated earlier, the program has changed. Uh, Prof. Dube will do the opening and welcome, and then Prof. from that, we'll then do uh, the introduction so that um, the Secretary General can then take the podium and give his lecture. For housekeeping purposes, on the to my right hand side, at the far end, is where you can locate the toilets if you need to go and relieve yourself. So without further ado, I present Professor Dube um, to come and do the opening and welcome on behalf of Black Forum South Africa. Thank you. Sanbonani, good evening. Sanbonan, my Africa. Yeah. I was we are coming alive now. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, mine is very, very short. Mine is to start by acknowledging the presence within our midst of uh, various of our important guests that we invited to be with us. We have in our midst the Secretary General of the African National Congress, Mr. Figuilem Balula. We have in our midst Mr. Kesha Koga from the Koga Brothers that we have been working with as Black Forum. They are from Petri Tif, from Kayaba Amlava. And then we have the Executive Mayor, Mr. W. Mgomezulu, Executive Mayor of Khartibande District Municipality. And of course, we have Advocate Hakuti Moruta, who is our host tonight, who brought us together here. If I have forgotten to mention anyone's name, I apologize in advance. You are all important to us at Black Forum. We are glad and happy that you are with us tonight in this gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here to commemorate the 1959 potato boycott that happened in Bumalanga. When I think about this, I remember a blog post that was once written by a colleague of mine, with Dr. Plongo, and she said, we have so many holidays in South Africa, and if you look at them closely, none of them are really about us or about affirming us. All of them come from one injustice or the other. We do not have a holiday that says this one was founded solely to celebrate blackness, to celebrate Africanness, to say this is by African people, for African people. We are basically 
um, using some reverse psychology, affirming what was done to us. We are here tonight because something was done to our people. But what we are going to take away from tonight is that our people rose together and realized that if you had the means of production, you will cause the system to come to its knees. It's the only way you can bring them to book. It's the only language they understand. I will not dwell much on this. Mine is to open and then welcome. I will be as short as possible because we have people here who are extremely busy. They have to run from here to other programs. I will not, therefore, drag this any longer. I will thank them for coming, and I will thank you all for gracing us with your presence tonight. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Um, back to regular programming. The program will resume as stated before. I'm also not going to speak for long. Uh, so to the podium now would be Advocate Khakhoudi Murota to give an overview of Black Forum South Africa and why it's commemorating uh, the 1959 potato boycott. Thank you. Manda. Manda. We too. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Or uh, if I will have to deploy my political cap, let me start by first and the most uh, greet our special guest and uh, keynote speaker, the SG of the African National Congress, the Rasmatas, Mr. Fiofogol himself, the fire eater, the translator, Comrade Figidem Balula the ANC executive committee member, and the member of the Limpopo Provincial Legislature, the energetic cadre, the lover of education and wisdom, the philosopher Ruda, Dr. Dixon Ma Namani Masemola, the executive mayor of Khatsiwan, the district municipality, uh, the polite, the cool and collected. Those who love him more, they call him Mr. Service, excellent service delivery. I talk about Mr. Walter Ngomezulu, who is the chairperson of the ANC in Khartsivande district municipality uh, uh, district and the mayor executive mayor of Khartsivande district municipality uh, we have uh, the deputy chairperson of the ANC Ngangala region in the Mpumalanga province and the chief whip of the Ngangala district municipality well rounded leader uh, Mr Bushomani the spokesperson of the ANC in the same Ngangala region in Mpumalanga province, MMC infrastructure, well-rounded, accessible leader, Mr. Mahuiting. We have the Toka brother uh, uh, from the Toka family uh, here, uh, the ANC Youth League, SACP leadership present here, leadership from Black Forum for this event under the capable leadership of Ms. Jane Matebe and Heperali advocate Heperali Gilia leadership of the organized labor, particularly Nehau, APSA, and uh, SAU, leadership of the UNISA Law Student Association present here under the visionary leadership of President Bono Masagwana, uh, professors and academics, uh, professionals from different industries and institutions present here. I see um, one of the executive deputy dean of the College of Human Science, uh, Professor Mashao, is also here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without Watatamala Jemala, I would like to greet you all in the high and unbreakable spirit of melanin and black solidarity. Let me first and the most seize this opportunity to pass our warmest gratitude to the organizers of this beautiful gathering of Black Solidarity and Prosperity Organization, Black Forum South Africa, and to the University of South Africa for having availed this great facility to us. Ladies and gentlemen, when Steve Bigo said, Black men, you are on your own, there was no Black Forum South Africa. Now, because there is Black Forum South Africa, Black men, you are no longer on your own.
we are in this important uh, meeting of black heads to reflect on our common challenges and on how to achieve our common goals as black majority in contemporary South Africa. We strongly believe that the time to reflect on black reality in this country is now, taking into account the reality that we have two different lives in the same country, that of the dominated and that of the excluded, that of the dominated, excuse me, and excluded black majority, and that of the dominating privileged white minority tribe. However, we strongly believe that black people must free themselves from this existing post-colonial apartheid, hang apartheid hangover as soon as we decide to do so. No one but ourselves. We must do it for ourselves and for generations uh, to come so that we attain our own black self-worth or self-respect. All the races and ethnic groups in South Africa are so well organized to attain their own self-determination. It is only us, black bodies, black nation, being divided and remain weak in our majority. Ladies and gentlemen, America has a plan for us. Europe has a plan for us. China has a plan for us. It is about time we have a plan for ourselves as black people and set our own agenda. The secret, the secret weapon is our black unity in our majority. Ladies and gentlemen, we are seeking ethnic consciousness as black people. That is the reason we engage in this ethnic mobilization using Black Forum as a vehicle trying to visit to a seat of a problem. There have, been, there have been no systematic change. Black people still study to get employment, same economic domination, same history, same philosophy, same religion, which have established the present code of morals, a mindset a black majority has been brought under the control of white minority. My task is to provide an overview on the objectives of Black Forum South Africa and this commemoration of 1959 potato boycott uh, public lecture. Be informed that Black Forum South Africa is a lobby group organization that advocates for black solidarity and black prosperity in democratic South Africa beyond political party lines. We strive to address our common challenges and achieve um, our common interest in order to attain our self determination. We draw our existence as an organization from Section 235 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, which states that every ethnic group or tribe within democratic South Africa could organize itself in order to achieve its own self-determination. Hence, we see extreme right-wing racial NGOs such as AfriForum and some impactful research institutes which are obsessed with protecting and sustaining white supremacy and white hegemony within the contemporary democratic South Africa. However, take further note that the Black Forum South Africa was founded by very few esteemed scholars and academics here in the University of South Africa in the early 90s uh, as UNISA Black Forum. I talk about the College of Scholars and Researchers such as Professor Luca David Mosoma, the current chairperson of the Commission of Protection of Rights of Culture, Religious, and Linguistic Communities. Uh, we talk about Professor Manta Makanya, the former vice chancellor of this university, uh, Professor Idumile Mosala, the, the former secretary of the State Capture Commission, Professor Zoto Moza, the current VP teaching and learning in this university. We talk about Professor Takazo Mufugeng, we talk about advocate uh, Jovotwana, Prof. Simon Sokoma Maimela, uh, Prof. Lizo Jafta, Prof. Mocheti Motlabi, Prof. Palaji Sevade, amongst other great college of scholars. But this organization was further inherited by capable leaderships of uh, Prof. Buleng Lengabula, the current vice chancellor of this university, uh, Dr. Masia Sotrigwa, 
the current DDG at the Department of Higher Education and Training, and uh, Professor Hamfru Mahashwa, who is the president of this organization. The key mandate of this UNISA Black Forum then was to advocate for transformation and Africanization of UNISA research and acad academic curricula and to permanently dismantle the perpetual imbalances of the past between black and white colleagues. Our generation have inherited this great organization within UNISA and further caused irreparable damage on white supremacy and systems within the university. We subsequently realized that our model and formula of contesting you know, white privilege and emancipating black people have worked effectively within this university. We have then in 2020 decided to graduate Black Forum from being UNISA Black Forum into Black Forum South Africa. Black Forum South Africa is quite alive to the fact that, comrade uh, SG, we are quite alive to the fact that every sitting government in a democratic dispensation has or will have a job to govern, to govern South Africa for all South Africans and anyone who lives in it. That we accept. However, we realize that someone else must drive the black agenda. Black Forum has decided to be that someone to fill the void and drive the black agenda in this country. Therefore, we are not going to waste time to lament the inequalities of our society. We are instead going to use all our powers to equalize it. And our power is in our resolve, in our, in our numbers, and in our unity as black people and black organizations. We will not be hindered by any political affiliation, religious affiliation, ethnic, ethnicity, or class. Ours is a black agenda. Remember that as the black nation, we have we have made a huge mistake in 1994 to rely solely on government agenda and neglected a black agenda. Whereas white people were busy launching and capacitating white NGOs akin to Black Forum to advocate for and sustain the white agenda. These white NGOs are so powerful today to the extent that they are critical political feeder into the mainstream politi politics of this country and directly empower white political parties such as Democratic Alliance and FF+. However, if black people and black organizations, black businesses, um, black political parties like the ANC uh, do not rally behind Black Forum as the Black Solidarity NGO, our freedoms will remain hollow, our rainbow flag a threat and our national anthem, a frenody. It is a fact that white supremacy, it is the fact that white system has established uh, powerful NGOs to play a critical role in protecting and affirming the rights and determination of their own minority group. Their aim has been to, pers has to, has been to perpetuate the status quo in this contemporary South Africa and further frustrate, of course, the government and any progressive organization or individual who seek to emancipate the vulnerable and disadvantaged uh, black people. We never had proper NGOs, Comrade Dixon Masemola, uh, which protects and affirms the rights of black people or which seeks to transform and eradicate the status quo and emancipate the dreams and hopes of black people uh, in this country, Black Forum is here to close that gap. From now going forward, when Afri Forum will be this side, Black Forum will be this side. <laughs> Ours is to contest white privilege, black on black violence, while we establish and maintain our own systems and institu institutions of value. In the same breath, we discourage this culture of having many political parties because whiteness thrives on one and the same you know, method, divide and rule. 
they divide and rule the majority black people in this country. If they don't divide us like that, they put great black leaders on a leash. We saw what happened in the city of Tswane here when they agreed with a particular black body to be a mayor. When that mayor turns against them, because they are holding him on the leash, they say he no longer qualifies to be a mayor. They take out the skeletons. That's how whiteness actually uh, thrives uh, in, this, in, this, in this country. Um, it needs to be said on behalf of black people, ladies and gentlemen, that Black Forum SA is not asking for more. To put it more crudely, Black Forum is first and the most not asking. If we are to ask, from whom would we ask? And who are we to be asking? We intend to take all, all the respect, all the dignity, and all the economic benefits that are due to us as the children of this soil. Hence, we stretch our hand to black people for our own black uh, determination. We seek to contribute towards a sound and globally competitive black South Africa. Establish a society that is even-handed in all respects. Ensure economic justice, promote the general welfare of people, and secure the blessings of freedom, of freedom for our black people and prosperity. What can Black Forum do for me? I hear someone is whispering to himself in his heart. What could Black Forum do for me? Of course, we can't repair the history. We can't reverse the wheel of time. We can't repair, repair the damage of centuries. But we can repair humans and the future. <coughs> and it is black people that require reparation through repairing the system that repress and continues to repress them. We can and we will repair the present and future of black people through intervening on their behalf. By fighting their battles, whether legal or at the workplace or business related. Otherwise, like we said earlier, our freedoms remain hollow, their flag a mere threat, and our national anthem a threnody. The aims and objectives, as I'm going towards the closure of my uh, representation, uh, the aims and objectives of this organization is to advocate for establishment of black systems, institutions, and, and firm values. I'm presenting here today, quite confident to report that Black Forum is accrediting Black Forum primary schools, basic education uh, institutions, uh, which will be launched across the entire country, but will, buy, will, will pilot here in Houding and in Bloemfontein, so that we develop, we educate our own children. We have professors here of Black Forum who are busy developing a school curricula for our organization, so that we no longer entrust our children for 12 hours, for eight hours, you know, under the care in local parentis of, of, of cure, of white, you know, you know teachers. Uh, we are trading our children for, for say. So we advocate for restoration, but over and above is the accrediting black farm schools, we are also accrediting, you know, <coughs> Um, uh, um, uh, through CITAS so that you could provide you know, uh, skills to less fortunate black bodies, maybe whom could not uh, attain their, uh, their degrees or their, their metric um, in the contemporary uh, South Africa. So we advocate, the second objective is that we advocate for restoration of black cultural values, languages, institutions, and systems uh, as black people, we are shaky, of course, when coming to uh, our culture. Uh, so Black Forum is going to organize the cultural uh, you know, institutions and groups so that they assist in organizing the black communities within this South Africa. Let me in this Black Forum so that we could bewitch uh, uh, or the system which is making us not to move forward. Uh, to restore black dignity in the country through quality legal representation. This is the biggest division in the Black Forum, the litigation division, uh, because there are a lot of atrocities and fair labor practices 
which are occurring and recurring within this country without a challenge. Actually, in this country, we have been accepting the fact that the system which oppresses us, white people are not challenged in this country. We celebrate time and time again when it is Abu Figile Mbalula, Abu Dixon Masemula who are being challenged by the media, being accused on our own things or on some things, but we have never seen white bodies being challenged and exposed to the public on the injustices, on the crimes which are you know, committing uh, at every tick of a second. So Black Forum is here to expose them. Um, so the, the litigation division in Black Forum, there are impact cases which we are busy with. We intervened in Bloomfontein when white people were killing and beating young um, children at the swimming pool. So we had to intervene quickly so that we restore and affirm their rights. Um, uh, the, the, another objective is that we advocate for solidarity of black people beyond political party lines. Our struggle is common. We must stop this thing of being divided over the color of the, uh, of the t or political t-shirt. As black people, we can differ, uh, but after that differences, we are going back to the same squalor, the same challenges uh, which we are facing as black people. So we need to, we are the only race which is not united. We must be united. And I'm happy the SG is here. Uh, he must put it in his um, um, objectives uh, within his organization. We advocate for establishment for black economic emancipation and self-reliance. Uh, I can't overemphasize on this. Uh, we advocate for black unity and dismantle black individualism syndrome. I'm the first black woman. I'm the first black this. I'm the first black that. It must come to an end and we embrace one another collectively as black, as black people. Because when we do that, we are playing in the hands of the system which thrives through our perpetual divisions. We advocate for sophisticated and meaningful professional skills development. I have touched on this uh, uh, about uh, uh, CETAS. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that uh, we are behind the schedule, but we are gathered here because we are commemorating the most important, impactful, and successful uh, historical occurrence, a political program which was launched by the African National Congress in 1959, when the farm laborers in Bethal, in Mbumalanga, were subjected to the slave conditions. Uh, they were forced to work without putting on clothes. They would even put the sex on their clothes to hide, to sustain their dignity. Uh, they will be sleeping on the floor during very harsh, cold weather conditions. Uh, West part, they will be moored to shambles at every tick of a second, and those whom were less fortunate will die. And after killing you, when they were killing them in that system, they will plant them as fertilizers. They will plant them as manures, as, as compost, because they were believing the white farmers at that time that when you plant black bodies uh, in their fields, at their farms, uh, they nourish uh, the, uh, the soil, and then the, the produce will be very much fresh. One Alexander guy was even saying, the shape of potatoes in 1959 were similar to a body of a human being, because most of them, they were coming from the flesh uh, of a human being used as a compost. So that's when uh, great leaders like our Khert Sivande, and I, I, I would like to suggest that we should not forget about them. Uh, he had to sneak into those farms and check the, in, uh, you know, the reality and the hardships, the atrocities which the farm workers were subjected to. But also the prisoners were taken there to labor, to work at the farm so that they could kill them in that, in that fashion. But those laborers said, how could South Africa move forward? When we are being killed, when we are being subjected as slaves, uh, uh, as if nothing is happening. So they raised their own awareness campaign by taking a skull of one of the killed laborers, packaged it in a potato sack, so that when it will be sold at the market, uh, uh, Comrade uh, uh, Mashomani 
could buy that potato sack. When he gets home, he finds a human skull there. Obviously, he'll call the police, and then that's how they raise an awareness. And then the Comrade of Harsivan, Double Governor Begi, organized the nation for national uh, potato boycott. It took four months after that four months, uh, and then uh, it, it gave, actually, it yielded a very positive you know, outcomes because it changed the status quo, the attitude at the mine, at the, at the, at the farms. Um, lastly, I have been speaking very fast so that I must, I must catch up with time. But lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to emphasize this. As black from South Africa, we are quite intentional about our key mandate of ethnic mobilization and about black people to achieve their much needed black unity. This lecture is not going to end here. We are going to talk to the police. We have identified Bidrediv, uh, uh, to talk, to come with a mediation program between farm communities, farm workers, and farm owners. So from here, there will be other programs will be running across the country where um, these experiences I've just shared are, are alive and well. So on the 29th, on the 30th of September, Black Forum will be hosting a huge uh, ceremony where we'll be unveiling the tombstones of some of the farm workers who have been killed by the, by the farmers in Bidrediv, in Bombiskral, uh, uh, in Mkondo. Uh, more specifically, uh, the Koka family whose brothers were killed uh, by these white farmers. When we went to Mkondo, when we went to Bamboo Skral in that farm, white people still have the torture room. If you could be found walking around that, that place, they will, they will take you to the torture room. You will tell them, why do you want? But I'm talking about things which are happening now. How they killed the Goga brothers, shooting them at the private parts. Uh, when we were dealing with that, we realized that the Shatsuayo brothers were killed in the same style that the boy children, when they attain a particular age group, these white people are killing them so that they eliminate boy child, maybe a contestation, as, as they believe, from the community. They sodomize young boys to destroy them so that when they grow up, they should not even dare try to contest the atrocities which the white farmers are, you know, are subjecting them to. They poison the the cows of the farm communities, the 15 cows of the Goga family were poisoned. Uh, you know, so they do as they please. Uh, government cannot give them RTP houses because these farming communities are dwelling on private property at the farms and they refuse to relocate because the grand grandparents, that's where they were born and, and bred. So now, to us, this Black Forum, SG, is a matter of survival. Unlike our parents, who fought for an ideal, which if needs be, they were prepared to die for. Unfortunately, we are not prepared to die for this great black forum ideal. Black people have been dying. We can't always die as black people in order to achieve a particular ideal. Therefore, unlike our parents, Black Forum is pushing for an ideal which, if needs be, we are prepared to kill for. Thank you very much. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I can't say much on that. Um, you know, to say, to add on that would just be spoiling it. But one thing I can say, and one thing I have taken away from that, is that indeed, um, 64 years since the commemorate, uh, the 1959 potato uh, boycott, it seems like the lives, the ordinary lives of the farm workers and the farm dwellers have not changed even post-democracy. and. Indeed, Black Forum, I think, is the most relevant organization right now to change that reality of these black, uh, of the laborers and the farm dwellers. 
I think there's an important position in society that Black Bottom can play. And the, its its presence in this NGO space is one is one that is sorely needed, and is one that is very very critical. Ladies and gentlemen, to introduce the SG of the African National Congress, to introduce Ubafigile uh, Mbalula, Baron Tadumela. Um, is none other than the philosopher himself, Dr. Dixon Masemona. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, director of the program. Advocate. A very good evening to my comrades and colleagues who are here tonight, who have just been introduced by Advocate Maruta, leaders of uh, various uh, campus-based uh, structures represented here by your good selves in your eminence. I would not want to pick you one by one, but I can recognize a few phases that I'm familiar with. Leaders of the academia who are here representing various uh, uh, schools here in the university who are here tonight. And all of you comrades and colleagues, a very good evening. I'm standing before you tonight to perform a very important uh, task uh, to this uh, memorial uh, lecture or a public lecture on what has been explained to us already. Uh, to present your good selves, the keynote speaker for this event. But before I do that, uh, program director, I suppose uh, from what uh, Advocate Maruda has said, uh, Black Forum South Africa, understandably, in my view going forward, I suppose it subscribes to, very importantly, advanced nationalism, not any other matter in that context. And that in itself will make it more relevant to resonate with the founding values of our democratic system of government as a country, as a nation, and of course, as a people. And understandably, going forward, there would be a need for a much closer discussion on how best some of those matters could find appropriate expression within the confines and features of advanced nationalism, close quote. My task is to present your good selves, the Secretary General of the African National Congress. You are quite aware that in December last year, the governing party, the Liberation Movement, the African National Congress, had a very successful national conference, out of which when it rose, it elected a leadership collective that is led by seven officials, by the president, and as well as the secretary general. UNISA, Black South Africa, Black Forum South Africa, is honored to have been able to secure the presence of the highest office in the ANC. The chief executive officer, politically speaking, of a very big and old liberation movement in our continent that has played a significant role in many revolutions, not only on our revolution. And therefore, it is an honor and a privilege for me to present one of the known political leaders in the South African politics, a leader who emerged from the youth movement, who emerged from COSA structures, South African Youth Congress a political prisoner who was arrested at a very early age 
And I suppose by that time he was only 14 years old when he tasted the environment of prison. He soldiered on, and today he is the Secretary General of the ANC. The former Minister of uh, Sports, the former Minister of uh, Police, the former Minister of Transport, and currently the Secretary General of the ANC. SG, the people of UNUS are here, looking forward to hear your address. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade uh, Namani Dixon Masemula, Program Director, Advocate Morota, esteemed uh, academia, scholars, and uh, students, youth and all faculties of great importance to this great university. Um, it is a great pleasure and privilege for me to be here tonight. And I just want to greet you all and um, the leadership of uh, Black Forum South Africa for inviting the African National Congress to be with you here today. As we gather here, we deep our revolutionary banners on the passing away of a giant of our revolution and struggle, human rights activist, Dr. Isop Pahat, who was laid to rest uh, today. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Today, it is important to be here at UNISA. And I think the first task of Black Forum, before you think about, uh, before you think about Africa Forum, is to defend the vice chancellor of this university. <laughs> That's how you are going to be tested. Before you think about Africa Forum, start by defending the Vice Chancellor. Then you will, pro will know about your presence. I'm saying so because women who are appointed in these institutions, starting with UCT, a woman was harassed there by racial groups who think that uh, that university belonged to them, and that. Uh, an African woman cannot lead an important university like uh, University of Cape Town. She was harassed and nobody came to a uh, defense. Now they are doing it uh, here in this university. I've never seen black people and women standing up and just being mad in the true sense of the word or the deepest meaning of the word madness and defending this woman. Never seen it. I've seen you with graduations, blue, purple, yeah. I've never seen anyone standing for this woman in this university. Now I'm coming to Black Forum. He's standing for blackness and black excellence, I suppose, and we don't talk about it. Let's talk about it. In my view, I think it is discrimination. In my view, I believe that uh, it's not about incompetence. It is fundamentally about the fact that uh, elements uh, of chauvinism and all of that think that uh, a big university like this cannot be led by a woman. 
That's the starting point. Because if this university was led by a man, even if he was black and African, he will not be harassed like this woman have been harassed. I think uh, we must stand up for the truth. And at the same time, we must never be threatened. And we must stand up and protest and make our voices to be heard. And I think that is important. That is my first point in terms of my greetings, Black Forum. And then the second point is that South Africa has produced post-1994. For the black middle strata in great numbers. And there are people who say that uh, we have achieved what we have achieved on our own. It's got nothing to do with struggle and what you can call a revolution in this country. We have become the people that we are as young people because on our own, we just became successful. It has got nothing to do with the process of struggle. Now, the ANC government consciously created the black middle strata, not class, because a class is something that is defined against the means of production. And nothing that says in terms of the strata, it has got anything to benefit from the means of production. It's the evolution in the social stratification of society of a creation by the democratic revolution deliberately of a special strata uh, in terms of the development of our own society uh, uh, to create this particular strata for the benefit of the revolution. It happened to be black and African. And that is what is important. So it is not something that happened on its own it is because there was a conscious effort on the part of the ANC. If you like, which is not what we're talking about, you will say we're creating a black brother bond. And it was not a black brother bond we're creating, it is a black middle street. The brother bond in this country, in terms of its evolution and the success stories you've got of state-owned companies which became successful, it is because of the fact that there was a conscious effort on the part of the Afrikaners when they came into power uh, to create the brother bond, which plotted everything in this country. That's why people who created and worked a spoor net, which was called spoor vech, were not even standard three, grad, I mean, standard three people. And then uh, the highest standard you can pass as black person was JC under Bantu education. Makua a standard three anaranadi kampani. Zeridi bitanga rogis purvech, which is trains. And then uh, which in the process of amalgamation, we then in the unbundlement created uh, Boprasa today, Botransnet and all of that. That thing was one. The ANC then unbundled that thing and said, the other front company will deal with, uh, will deal with uh, enterprise interest of the state. And the other one will deal with uh, not enterprise interest, but public interest in terms of expansion of public transport for those who don't have, which is the masses of our people, the poorest of the poor. And we called that the intervention of the state, which was a conscious decision of the ANC to do that. So these people, then they left, and then they ran away because we brought laws, we started to ask for qualifications and all of that. And then, uh, then they disappeared in the system. So that is why the successful story of this uh, uh, company here in South Africa today uh, which uh, went under liquidation, was created under South African uh, Airways, was run by a person who doesn't have a metric, is a direct descendant of that old uh, system of apartheid, which was the policy of the brother bond, to deliberately affirm their own. When the ANC 
came into power then created this black magistrate. And then uh, uh, most of our people went to school, passed, and all of that. And um, that's where they are today to assume bigger responsibilities. But what do our people do when they come into strategic positions? Instead of transforming the system, the system transformed them. So that is why you are unable to defend one of your own in this university. Who did not come here by accident, but those who got many powers and very powerful, they want a gone. But you as black and African people, you're fighting a black on black violence. Because any one of you who ascend to a top position, you work within the system to bring them down. And uh, you are not, you are not in a militant position to stand up even when an injustice is visited upon them. Because it's a black person, I'm jealous. You know this revolution wouldn't have reached this stage. We wouldn't be talking about if ever it was characterized by petty jealousies. Blacks are defined by petty jealousies. And the country is going in your hands when you think you are in charge. You are not in charge for next. <laughs> you are not. You are not in charge. You've got degrees, you are educated, you've got all the other things. We have created this black middle street that think of itself. Makuaka standard three, they never thought of themselves. They understood Kikenika standard three, Kyola Talikwa, Lelingla standard one. Fanikerp, Kia and now global responsible, Mo Iba Foromani, Mo Mospur Netemo, Usheva Uri, Mabur Lidi components, Sadi train. Fanikir Kiki and manager Ayamu. And then they come and tell you that they've got experience to have run this country. Where will you get experience if you are not affirmed by your own? And they tell you today that you don't have experience. And they tell you that is racialism. They tell you that affirmative action is backwardness. And they tell that employment equity is not something that you've got to entertain. South Africa must be what it is because blacks think they have arrived. And then they are quite content for what they are, just a cream on top. And then that is it. And therefore they are in charge. And then uh, we drop, you know, titles, professors and all of that. But what do we do about our titles to advance the course of national democratic revolution? Here is a vice chancellor is being shot down in front of us. We do nothing about it because we will not do anything up until it is me who ascend to that particular position. So, Black Forum, you've got an important task. Afri Forum is building a university here in Pretoria, just across the mountains here. Yeah. They build a university and they get that money from Afrikaners. And then they've got a, a township they called Orania. They do everything there. So why do they build their own university when there is UNISA? Why? Che Guevara says young people must always be obsessed of thinking of why things are the way they are. So they build an African university. They teach themselves. They, they say they need to preserve their own culture. And therefore, they need their own university. With their own money, they build it. And then we've got universities in and around us. That's what they do. And if ever there is a problem and black people go to court to protest because a white man or an Afrikaner have done the following things and so on, um, you are being chastised that uh, you are not civilized people and all of that. And this is what we talk about in terms of the historical um, evolution of this uh, potato boycott. Uh, because this notion of an injury to one is an injury to all is gone among us. Because we have arrived. We enjoy freedom. And uh, this freedom is hollow in a way. 
and to a point where we think that we can forsake and forego this freedom. They don't think like that. They go to elections, they vote every elections without, even if they get a lower percentage, they don't give up. They don't. And they vote without fail. And yet, in less than 30 years, when we have been oppressed for 300 years, we think of changing. Because of a few blacks don't think straight when they come into power, even within the ranks of the liberation movement. And there were our African intellectuals to participate and shape the destiny of our country rather than to forsaken. What happens to the black middle straighter? It vaccinates. It begins to teach and tell our people that um, apartheid was better. They've never lived under apartheid, majority of them. We don't know anything about apartheid. Apartheid was a mess. Uh, it was a big mess. It gave us the potato boycott, which is what we're talking about here today. So I'm saying Black Forum is a very important organization that have got its job uh, cut out. And uh, it is important that uh, we need to support it in terms of the programs that you embark upon. The concept is right, and uh, we need to awaken our people uh, from the slumber and of believing that they have arrived. And the system has actually transformed them uh, to where they are today. And I think uh, the book, Capitalist Nigger, speak to us about uh, black people and their attitude to success, about black people, their attitude to one another, black people and their attitude to wealth, black people to their attitude about upliftment and uh, empowering each other. And I'm not talking race because we are a non-racial party. I'm essentially talking about what Tabu Mbeki was nearly killed in this country for saying there are two economies, if you remember. Until today, if you can utter that, even among the advanced intellectuals and academia in the corridors of these institutions, they'll tell you Mbeki was talking nonsense. And then he said there are two economies. There is one of rich and advanced, well-educated, and so on. And then there is the second one. And then it defined it underprivileged, less educated. And then uh, the means of uh, bringing this together are completely, you know, widened. And then you ask yourself in 2023, we're talking about deepening inequality. We saw it uh, 10 years ago, and you think it can actually be overcome in 29 years. And they tell you that it, it can be. And that is what they say. In 29 years, you can overcome an inequality. Mbeki characterized it a long time ago. And they said that that is an Achilles heel of this nation. They said, no, that's not the problem. And then, here we are as blacks, we believe that uh, things could have changed even for better. Yes. Um, coming into power and at the same time not doing other things that we're supposed to do, uh, it comes with the responsibility of accountability, which is important. But at the end of the day, do not forget that and forsaken the revolution and the struggle simply by believing that things could have changed for better in less than 29 years. And I'm just putting it to you. Um, uh, and what has happened in this country is that we have now realized death of ideas and initia. Intellectuals, academia have surrendered their thinking capacity to Twitter. <laughs> so that's where the real debate is going on, on Twitter. Uh, 
this globalization has been good to me, I must say. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, it has not been to majority of us in terms of the national debate. Because there's no more engagement. It's insults. Um, we don't debate. Um, when somebody starts to think and raise issues, that discussion, you won't find it in the corridors of newspapers and talk shows in this country. I addressed a press conference yesterday and I spoke about the things we're talking about, triple B, E. I spoke about electricity, of course, is the buzzword, Spooky is dancing nicely. <laughs> so I spoke about, uh, in that particular press conference, about a whole lot of other things. I talk about inflation, I talk about the cost of living is too high, it's a problem. I talk about Ukraine. Nobody's even interested to analyze this Ukraine war. Uh, all people I see on Twitter, they say, what is Ramaphosa doing there when he's failing Africa? But nobody writes and say, what connects us with that? And then African leaders, they go for the first time after so many, and I said that to my president, you know, you brought some hope, you guys in uh, France, when you spoke for once with one voice. Whether that voice, anyone can agree with it, I just liked it. When you got Macron changing, you know, from red to whatever, and then I look at him there, they thought that you were just coming to get and go back home. <laughs> told it was not nice, man. I'm sure he regretted it. <laughs> Where was I bringing this, uh, these niggas here and all of that? And then uh, they were on point. It is as though they caucused, and they did not. So that was a great inspiration from our leaders. And then I said, no, there is a future here. So I'm saying uh, this, you know, things that are happening in the national debate in our country, um, where we have all surrendered our thinking capacity and everything to Twitter. Uh, Elon Musk is improving a lot from 140 characters to at least try to. If you want to analyze and engage, it's Facebook, but Facebook, you realize you're dealing with another mass. So, uh, so who's driving the national debate in the country? Who? Uh, where we sit and engage and challenge each other uh, outside insults and say, what are we talking about here? What are the issues we're talking about on any other matter that come to the fore in terms of South Africa? So I'm there, and then I present all these things. I'm, I'm, I'm certain that this press conference is going to be hot. And actually, myself, I must be prepared to represent the ANC here. Hey, I'm coming with big stuff here. The economy, I'm telling them gaining a close. What is really in our houses, where we walk, what we eat, how we feel, there's going to be fireworks here. We are live on television. Ah, but figure out the visa and get branch here, ANC, Yase, Western Cape, Bandibuza and the Youth League end of the conference. ASG, the conference of the Youth League, they say you did this and that. I said, these things I just talked to you about are not important. I mean, uh, they are not of interest to you and the country which you must inform. You want South Africa to debate who's elected and how at the Youth League conference. How does that change the price of bread on Monday? that Colin is a president of the Youth League. It doesn't. And uh, the cost of living and all of those things, where are we heading to? We get called to debates. Uh, when we get there, 
Uh, there's another one, I think, today. Mashengi attended News 24. They want me there to go and speak. News 24, big debate. On the topic is about coalitions. What's going to happen next year? Uh, are you really going with Malem? Even this uh, debate about coalitions is shallow. Um, shallow. Do, do you go with DA or with uh, EFF? If you drop below 50% in South Africa. That's the question you are asked, coalitions. It ends there. Uh, you are either with Malema or if you drop. Uh, that's the debate. Uh, so these discussions are not there. So we don't get called as politicians who represent political parties to be engaged on uh, political discussions and to be judged fairly on the basis of what we present in this discussion uh, about where are we taking, Manuda, where are you taking the ANC to? Okay? We get called, we appreciate, uh, we appreciate the airtime. Whether the airtime changes how you think about us, I don't know, but we do appreciate to be on TV from time to time. And when you get there, you've got to be asked. Now, I sit in an interview with a British uh, person called uh, Ad Talk. It is really hard talk. And then I come to South Africa. I'm asked about the branch. Uh, and then <laughs> he, I then realize what happened from that British man who was very harsh, but uh, really taking me to task that I must prepare. I must be ready. And then I come home, and then I ask, what went wrong? And all of that. So I'm saying, globalization has been good. We can connect with friends everywhere in the world. Uh, we can have uh, smart gadgets. We can be good like that. But at the end of the day, it has also done us a disadvantage that we no longer read newspapers. We no longer write. We no longer engage in public debate. Because it's easy to wake up and answer a passion in a paragraph or two on Twitter, and then they insult you back. A very few will be interested in what you say, and it, it's gone. And then uh, all what they are interested in is the looks. Uh, and I realize the people who post their looks, uh, hey, they get uh, a good uh, audience. Uh, but when you come, you try to think that thing doesn't happen. And everywhere else. And then this thing, Kutiwa is working. And so on. So I was saying in this press conference yesterday, and when I criticize on behalf of the ANC, the behavior of the police, they say it's ANC police. I say, no, police. Now I'm coming to the topic. The police cannot brutally act like that within the state. And then uh, somebody, for political reasons, now try to uh, define the party as separate from the state and say, no, somebody argues for that. He says that these things are combined. It's ANC. I say, how does a policeman who's trained as a cop become ANC by day and government by night and a cop when he's doing an operation like that one of beating up people on the road? Can't be ANC. And the ANC can't be quiet about that. And I'm happy today that those police have been uh, suspended. And uh, they must account. And that IP will investigate and make a determination. So, South Africans, nobody was engaging with that point from trying to understand what is the role of VIP protection. And then everybody else says that, no, that must be done away with. Uh, it's not important. Um, and then we're compared with other countries where there is no crime. You know, when somebody compared the president of Finland with the president of South Africa, there's no crime there. The president can afford to go to work by bicycle in Finland. And uh, I don't know what is the population, it's very less. And uh, the standard of living there 
is totally different from ours. So if you were to compare the president of South Africa with DRC, have you been to DRC? You can't move there. And then you say, you must be like president of DRC who goes to work with a bicycle. You will not be in a position, the president of DRC or any African country. Here. So we are compared as a developing nation with developed nation that uh, in this and that country, presidents uh, are defined in this and that particular way. So in a democratic dispensation, we have set the rules what uh, our politicians and people must behave. And nobody's made a favor here. We all have got to account for our part. Uh, it is correct. Politicians sometimes think that um, they own the law. They don't exist within um, the, the law. They own the law. And if the law sometimes, because of our political challenges, deals with Mbalula, who probably does things. Uh, you say it is politics. I can tell you that uh, weaknesses that you have is what those who are opposed to you in political cycles of, uh, exploit. They exploit them. That uh, you are, you've got these weaknesses and they work on them. But first and foremost, you are responsible for your life. It cannot be that uh, every time you are in trouble, society and the party must babysit you for your problems. You must get out of those problems on your own. But uh, the rules must be defined by fairness. And that's where the Black Forum comes in and the Afri Forum. The Afri Forum wants to bring everything that is black and probably successful down. It's their agenda to prove the system is wrong in the hands of black people. But the Black Forum must say we will defend our own but not on the basis of incompetence and recklessness. We'll defend the best of the best in the system. So that Mbalula does not hide beyond incompetence in the name of blackness. And then begin to say that, no, I'm being victimized here because one day I want to become president. Because you should become president and want to be president out of your teeth. For one thing, one, two, three, four, we are about... Here yeah, in this country, we have defended things that we're not supposed to defend. And I don't want to mention them because I'm now Secretary General. <laughs> so, we were not supposed to defend. And uh, you intellectuals, you should say, and I uh, wish some of you, I applaud. When that moment came, you stood up and said, this is not in my name. No, I can't go with this. Because I was not in now you are professors. You, you need to lead the light. You, could, ah, you must go and tell that thing to those people back with branching, not me. This is nonsense. This is nonsense, and I'm telling you one, two, three. It's incompetence. I will never put up with that in the name of blackness or the revolution. And that is what we want. So when we move ourselves and talk about integrity and all of that, we need to understand what we are talking about. We are not talking about romanticizing incompetence. You know, I could see uh, Dr. Namani Mo was introducing me. He had a difficulty because <laughs> so, he must finish not with minister, he must finish with Muno <laughs> Because our kids are no longer going to be led by people who don't have anything and then still talk about apartheid. But we apartheid by us, she is so open and so on. You must now finish by saying, 
Wait, they no minister. It's here now. Because we must go to school as we get into these positions. Uma fikin je ulo apara pura perega bagala or politician. We are paraka valor lenaki petil and that get a tagaya kausan. Kito ema lilu namo ki fon. That's the society we are building, and it's not discriminatory. It is a society that is real. It is the blackness we celebrate. It's the non-racialism we build within the system that has disadvantaged us. And in that system, we want to succeed. And we lay the rules and the processes that enable us to succeed. So that there's no one who said, Negi kwa there shouldn't be. We must all be in a position to raise our hands and participate and compete fairly. And uh, if ever people are coming at you unfairly and they are doing things at you, society and others will see. And Black Forum will be there to defend you. That our brother is being brought down here because we can see. And nani aningeni into ngafunega ngani ingen? Ningeni into ni bona ayo na anu guti no. Yeah, we have been invited to war. So the 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 1959 program happened because people were deprived. Young boys were taken. Uh, Young boys were being taken, undressed naked, and then uh, taken to the farms to do this. Revolutionaries stood up and then exposed these atrocities, but it didn't add into that, didn't end at that point. It meant that they must stand up and revolt, because that was a form of an injustice. Oba Bukhert and Sibande uh, became the leaders of the time, organizing underground and did what they had to do. And uh, that ushered in a period of defiance. Women came here to Pretoria, 1976, 1985, but uh, this potato boycott from the farms, the downtrodden, have brought and ushered in in our democracy, not just to think, as and when we shape the new dispensation and the kind of constitution we were writing at that time to enshrine even in its Bill of Rights, the recognition of this thing called rights, that you cannot just trample upon people as if uh, they don't have rights, and that, that is what actually happened. And the ANC championed that particular struggle. And this is what uh, you are celebrating and commemorating here today. But uh, you are commemorating this in the right place, the University of South Africa. And uh, that is why I start with this long prelude. In summary, it says the struggle continues. And that is what I was talking about. And we must then be reminded of that and not romanticize the fact that we are, bla we are black and all of that, otherwise we'll just become like civil rights organizations, which are very key, but in the United States of America, we are not that. We are dominant in this country. We are a majority, and we must never apologize uh, for who we are, because we have to stand up. Apartheid did not, uh, uh, was not abolished because uh, they wanted to. They had no choice. Uh, apartheid uh, uh, was crumbling and uh, it was institutionalized. Its laws and some of the laws are still there and so on. Uh, uh, the power of the people, and I was saying when Prof was speaking here, black power, uh, because the power of the people uh, was overwhelming into the system such that uh, apartheid regime had to surrender. So there was no turning back. Everybody in the world was not with them, except America and the United Kingdom. 
Margaret Thatcher and uh, Ronald Reagan and them. But the rest of the world, the United Nations, was against them. So they had to surrender. Here at home, uh, the defiance campaign, and uh, our people now, every corner, every street were mobilized. And, and that is what is important. And our intellectuals, academia, themselves stood up and then said, no, enough, it is enough. Uh, we are counted on the side of the oppressed. So I'm saying that the repressive laws of apartheid were defeated by a people united. And I'm saying the story that inspires us today is that the struggle continues, we do have rights, and then we must protect uh, worker rights and, and so on. And that is what uh, is important uh, for all of us uh, in this country. So I'm just saying here uh, that uh, as I conclude, it is important to note as well the role of the journalist uh, in the struggle for liberation like Ruth First, uh, who played a very important and a prominent part uh, in terms of exposing uh, the atrocities of apartheid, particularly in Pethal. So this commemoration and celebration is very important. Uh, this defiance campaign injected radicalism, and uh, it was in this context of this ongoing mass struggle, militancy, and defiance that laid the foundation of uh, the event where we celebrate in today the 64th commemoration of the Bethel 1959 potato boycott. We are commemorating one of the most successful boycotts led by the African National Congress. The ANC did not only lead alone, it was in alliance uh, with the South African trade unions, SACTU, then, uh, with SAIC, Indian Congress, uh, with colored people's organizations. This combined front of forces came to be called the Congress Alliance. So um, the 59 potato boycott was ignited by the brutality, like we said, and abuse of Bethel potato farmers. This act of brutality and many others were the spark that was needed to initiate the 1959 potato boycott. One of the prominent leaders was Comrade Gertin Sibande, uh, after whom one of the districts in Pumalanga is named after. I played an important role in organizing and exposing uh, this. And this led to the defiance campaign of women um, and so on, the Sharpeville massacre, uh, the boycott of uh, racial sport, and so on, 1976-1986. We are commemorating not only an event, but a historic milestone that influenced the direction of the struggle for liberation. We are celebrating the militancy and pushback by progressive forces uh, who, who took head on the systematic uh, introduction of repressive legislation. Uh, the contribution of the 59 potato per court cannot be underestimated. It planted a seed for laborers to fight for their rights and the establishment of a conducive working environment. The alliance led by the ANC championed the constitution that not only secured these rights, but guaranteed them the constitution of the Republic of South Africa. The basic conditions of employment, labor relations, and many other pieces of legislation have provided non-negotiable rights for workers since the dawn of democracy. Some of the workers' rights include the right to strike, the right to form trade unions, the right to fair labor practices. These rights are buttressed by appropriate resources and tools of trade. They ensure that workers must have safe working conditions and receive the agreed remuneration on agreed date to mention a few. It is important to state that the labor movement led by Kosadu, among others, 
has achieved a lot for the workers since the dawn of democracy. These hard-fought rights need to be protected and guarded at all material times. The ANC as a disciplined force of the left, the party as the vanguard of the working class and COSATU as the voice of the workers must continue to work together to protect and advance the gains of the workers. An injury to one is an injury to all. It is more amplified by the recent legislative amendments on the employment equity to ensure parity across race and gender. It is not easy when a revolution and struggle is simply hijacked uh, like it is happening right now with uh, all these parties like Solidarity and so on and mobilized just on the race card. Uh, here in Pretoria, white Afrikaners met and then uh, spoke in their meeting, I think at Fort Trekker Huachte in about two weeks ago. And then they said, uh, what are we going to choose? They said, uh, we must push them below 45%. Uh, so if we push them below 45%, what must happen to others? And what will happen to the ANC and so on? They said, no, we must work to push them below 45%. Uh, they met on their own. And then in that meeting there, they raised all sorts of fears that they have about this country. You know white people and Afrikaners, and I retweeted on my tweet one who said, I went to Australia for 11 years, dunking Yabonga. I came back, and I've been living in this country for about two, three years. I will never go back to Australia ever again. It's a white person. But the point is that, I'm not quoting in verbatim, that's what it actually says. But if you go to my timeline, I'm not trying to say follow me on Twitter. Um, I've got many followers, so. Uh, um, now, uh, the, the story of this white person is the story that uh, of 1994. White people in this country, they said in 1994, they were afraid of something called Swart Khefar. And then they packed others, they bought tin fish, they dig uh, holes and all of that because they said the danger is coming. And then many of them, they packed their things, they went uh, to Australia to stay in Australia. They left South Africa. So what this guy is saying, Agumna and in South Africa, as compared to where I went in Australia. So I saw white South Africans when I went to Australia and New Zealand with the Springboks. The stadium was full of South Africa. So I thought, these South Africans are from South Africa, you know, and so on, Qantas, airline. They said, no, they stay here. And then I met some of them in the pubs. Hey, they complained. I, we regret why we left. We were told that things are going to be bad. And that's it. Now, you see the African continent. If you go here, in the African continent, you go to the African continent, most of the cities and all of that, they have been revamped, construction, and so on. The majority of people I've seen there are white Africaners working in these construction companies in the African continent. They are building cities, Equatorial Guinea, Nigeria, everywhere. In Dubai, most of the companies there come from South Africa, is white South Africans. So who are the people who have benefited a lot out of the new dispensation, including opening up markets in the African continent? It's not you. All what you've got here is a Tazka, Toyota, and Limudende, uh, uh, and all of that. But uh, the wealth and the benefit of this trade with Africa and the opening up of markets is another race. I travel here on Ethiopia Airlines, it's full. It's white. I don't see you in those airlines. And then when I go to the Arab Emirates, I go there, Arab Emirates, I go to Qatar, 
there's a World Cup there. The person who organized the security in that World Cup is a policeman called Praise, who was responsible for the World Cup here in South Africa. Beautiful skills, nice skills and all of that, pulled together the World Cup. He pushed over there to organize that World Cup. And then when I ask them, they are expanding their airports, the best ATNS system, air traffic control. Who work in those air traffic control is white, young South Africans. Who has done that, the new dispensation? When I look at the numbers of people who are teaching mathematics and who are teaching English in the United Arab Emirates, numbers, they come from South Africa, majority is white South Africans. And then you've got the teachers here who know mathematics and all of that. They are not there. So who have benefited out of this new dispensation and the new democratic order that have opened relations with other countries? And then I ask ATNS, where are our young people? Uh, why are they not here? So I didn't get the un answers up until I came up with a plan that, look, I need these numbers to go up north in terms of these young people to gain experience and to be trained here in South Africa and to be dispatched there. I went to DRC. There are no airports there in DRC. It's a big country. I went throughout DRC. They say, we want AXA to come here. We want to build airports. I say, I will bring AXA here. I will also bring you South African young engineers who are black. Now I've left. I don't know whether Cindy will do that. But the Binational Commission must address that. So when you build airports in DRC, up to Goma and deep in the north of DRC, uh, when we do that through AXA, our youth here must go and do that work. So we've got the best engineers in this country. And they built here in the African continent, they do all the work, a lot of work, a lot of work. And then when you go to Syria, there is war there going on. And then when you go to Ukraine, you know who are the people who are fighting there. Some of them come from South Africa, they are mercenaries from the old order. When you go to Iraq, you find them there. It's old special branch. They get paid the exorbitant funds. And then uh, some of them are working in the coast, deployed there, and then fighting as rebels and all of that on behalf of nations and getting a lot of money. As mercenaries, they come from here in South Africa. So majority of them, they are not black and African. So I'm saying, if you look at what this new dispensation and who has benefited economically out of it, let's produce a paper and a research on that. You will realize that we just got the, the cream on top. But the main thing of what came with this new dispensation, because South Africa was a closed territory. And when we opened up, and many other nations said, come to us. The people who are going there uh, is still the old order. And we, we are not there. And then, chiga chiga lana nga matenda, sifunama 30%. And then, we, we're just fighting for tenders. And then, the uh, tenders, the real stuff is out there. You know, I go to the Department of Transport. And then uh, I look at uh, shipping. And then I look at uh, maritime. I don't find blacks there. I don't find blacks there. And then I look at the investment, which we changed now. Quiet, no tender, nothing, investment. An collab. But it's quite deep sea. Environmental affairs department, billions invested by the state, working together with the private sector there, 
Our people are not there. Or we are found to see Luella Api Tend as a Sepituri, Twa, Nitobek, and all of that, we are not there. The real economy, where it matter most, we are not there. So, I'm raising these issues. I'm the Secretary General of the NC. And I'm saying, yes. And I'm saying, I'm not going to stand in front of you like uh, Umheden. Uh, you know Umheden, kuti ufiwe ukala agami. Kutwa ye nga utule ukali sabantuana. Kutwa aumega nani. Uso ukali sabantuana because Umheden Akwapa tembele ko. But the person with faith, noba kolelwa ntonina, you either believe these things can change because we've got brains, or I believe I've got faith to go to Titukon. So I can't just cry endlessly. I've got hope that things will change for the better. So even ourselves, we can't just lament like we are not in charge. So things must change. For the better. And you may think that change for the better in 30 years, they don't. Uh, they change for the better. For now, you have learned and what needs to happen. So unless then we are going to be just become capitalist niggers. So our task and responsibility to remember the potato boycott and the black forum, we want to partner in this revolution of giving meaning to affirmative action, meaning to our people where they must go, and defending what is right that need to be defended. And that is what we need from Black Forum, and we partner. And then let's partner equally in terms of the generation of ideas, and ensure that our people are not left in the periphery. This government is, is run by us. You know, people call me there, they say they complain about the DTI. I say, I simplify, I say, I call the minister of DTI and then tell me what are the obstacles and what do we need to do. And then we will address those obstacles from Lutuli House. These universities, they are supposed to assist us with research and to be able to tell us, Nina Nitinga Nia Kubega Ani Pambi. These are the universities that must assist us. There is another one that is opening next door that wants to change the status quo. This one must help us to change things, to come this direction. That one, that one to change the present backward, we will defeat it if we get proper advice from these corridors. <laughs> Rather than rather than using these corridors to bring one another, one after the other down. This, this university must help us to change things. Because we might be sitting at Lutuli House and everywhere else, you think we've got capacity we don't have. That research capacity will come from here. To say, SG, we heard you the other day, you were talking about this. Here is the seminar, we are giving you this thing. Bring your ministers. I will bring you to the National Executive Committee. At least now, we are no longer talking things in that NEC about step aside, because who step aside is bad one. <laughs> uh, we are going to beg one life. Yeah, to beg one life. Mau going to beg so I put you in the bench. So we don't interact with our intellectuals and institutions to help the transformation agenda. We have lost it. We have lost it, so to say, when there is an election, SASCO, Youth League, everybody, Hey, intellectuals must come, you speak. And then we construct a manifesto, it's done. The manifesto is, just, is there. The issue is, let's work. There's nothing new to be done now. What we've got is enough to change this place. That is what is important. So we need you with your skills to get organized and assist the transformation agenda. If you don't assist it and you think the next person will, this thing is sinking. 
our great grandchildren and children will come and ask, what did you do about the country? They said, no, it fell in the hands of some Africans and that is, and they messed it up. We are in charge now. Let's not cry like Singapore hit it. Then potato boycott 1959 will not be in vain. We rely here for knowledge and power to transform this society. That's what is important. And then uh, to inform our forward momentum and do away with petty jealousies and many things that are not going to. So that's how we're going to take Afri Forum. Afri Forum doesn't end with negativity of politics. They've got a clear agenda of uh, maintaining the African Ardom with whatever that they have. We don't have a clear agenda about how we change this country for everybody to participate. And that is what we need to do uh, as a nation and uh, as, as organizations. And everyone who loves this country as a patriot to make it work. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've had a mouthful and <laughs> that was profound. That was very powerful. I think